This week, we're going to take our gridded cloud of observations from the Mesonet and turn them into a contoured map. Welcome to another MetPie Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, we're going to pick up where we left off last week, which was with some gridded observations. Now, we gridded lots of fields, but I wanted to look at how to take a single field, temperature, and we're going to plot some contours and make a nice looking contour map. Then we're going to calculate the temperature gradient, see if there's anything in there that we can use to help us find a front. So to start off with, it's of course imports. Import cartopi.feature, SC feature, cartopi coordinate reference system as CCRS, numpy as MP, and from metpy.plots, we're going to import the add metpy logo and US counties. Now we need to set up a coordinate reference system for our projection. I'm going to use our favorite, the Lambert conformal. The central longitude we're going to set to minus 100. And central latitude to 45. I'm going to make a figure. Specify my figure size to be 12 by 9. Remember that's going to be inches unless you have changed that in your matplotlibrc file at a certain dots per inch. We've got another MetPy Monday on that. I'm going to add the MetPy logo to figure. Down in the corner, 20 pixels in is a good place to start generally. And small. We're going to add a subplot to this figure. Remember, this returns an axes object. One row, one column, first plot. And the projection is our coordinate reference system. We're going to set an extent, which I happen to know for Oklahoma, something like minus 103, minus 94.4, 33.5, and 37.5. Remember, that's left, right, bottom, top is a good extent. And remember to tell it that those are plat curry because those are latitudes and longitudes, not Lambert conformal. We're going to add a couple features. We'll do states with a line width of three quarters of a point. And we'll do US counties with scale 1 to 5, and line width of a quarter. So let's go ahead and take a look at this map. That's not a bad looking map. Now, of course, I had pre-planned a little bit for those coordinates. Normally, you have to tweak those. But Oklahoma is a pretty common area to make a map for. Now, if you hadn't used counties since you installed the most recent version of MetPy or upgraded any version of MetPy, you're probably going to see a warning that it's downloading files. That's okay, it's just telling you that it's downloading some data to your system. All right, so let's try putting some data on this map. We know the colored scatter points are kind of a cheater's way to look at a contour plot, but let's actually make a filled contour plot. So we're going to use contour F. For filled contour. It's going to take our grid X, our grid Y, and the temperature grid. And let's just start with that actually. So we don't see anything. So why is that? Well, we haven't specified a transform, and remember we're dealing with data points that are in latitude and longitude. So I'm going to specify plat curry. Now we've talked about ways to speed up 
coordinate transforms by pre-storing things in other MetPy Mondays, but there's not that many points in this data set, so it contours relatively quickly. So now we have something that looks right. It's contoured over the area that we did our regridding in. So I'm going to line wrap that. And now I'm going to specify a color map, cool warm. And now that looks more like a temperature map. And it's pretty clear where the front is. But I want to label these contours and actually have some contour lines. So contour lines, x dot contour, grid x, grid y, grid temperature. Pretty much the same things here. Transform, plat curry. And let's see what we get. Okay, so the lines are now in the Virtus color map. That doesn't look quite right. In fact, I think I just want them to be a solid color. So I'm going to specify colors equals K. Okay, that's looking better. They might be a little bit thicker than I want them. So line width of 1. And you get a warning because it's actually line widths now. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. I'm going to put some labels on, contour label, give it our contour lines, tell it that I want them to be in line, and let's try a font size of about 10. Okay, that's not looking too bad. I think I want to control the spacing of these a little bit more. I think I want a few more contours in here. And the other thing that's bugging me is I see this duplicated a lot. I'm going to call that data CRS for data coordinate reference system because maybe I want to change the data and I don't want to have to remember all these places to go change in my map. Make sure we didn't break anything. Nope, that still works. Okay, so now contour levels. Uh, see, I'm going to go from 0 to 28, which will really be 26, in steps of 2. That ought to cover most of what was going on in the state this day. So we're going to add that, levels equals C levels, to our two contour calls. Hmm. Let's, let's do one degree and let's see how that looks. That may be a little bit much. No, I think I actually like that. We see this really tight gradient right here. And the last thing I want to add is a color bar. Give it our C object, our handle, for the filled contours. That's what I want, but it's way too large. Notice it's moving the MetPy logo down because the figure got extended and the axes compressed in that figure. So I'm going to use the shrink argument. Now let's try about 60%. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now it's smaller than the axes, 0 to 27, and I can see all the color steps. This is a good map. I'm, I'm happy with this map. Now the last thing I want to do is investigate gradient, because we know we've got a strong gradient here. We can visually see that, and that's a useful thing to find something like a front. But what can we tell about that mathematically? We've talked about gradient recently. I'm going to calculate the temperature gradient using metpycalc.gradient takes our temperature. Instead of giving it coordinates, I'm going to give it deltas, which are 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 degrees. Now, this is going to give us a gradient in degrees Celsius per degree of latitude or longitude degree of distance. Maybe not the most useful measure, but for making a plot or for running an algorithm to try to automatically find a front, it's fine. So I'm going to go back and just do our scatter plot just to see what this looks like. 
grid X, grid Y, color RC equals temperature gradient. And remember, it's going to return a gradient in the X and Y directions. So I'm going to make two plots the zeroth and the oneth dimension. And we see that as we go across the front, we get this really nice line that lights up. And if we're going north-south across the state, we see this gradient here. We don't really see the front much across here, but this is this change in gradient. So if we wanted to, we could even calculate a gradient magnitude by using NumPy square root temperature gradient zero squared plus temperature gradient one squared. And then we can do the same plot. And now we have the magnitude of the gradient. So we see the front as well as that feature here. We also see a lot of other possibly topographically related or other features in this plot. All right, so next week we'll wrap up by doing some more calculations with this data and making some more plots, but I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.